Hey everybody, it's Facial Plastics Friday, Dr. Brace here. Today I'm at Guelph General Hospital. We have two rhinoplasties, a revision neck lift, and a four quadrant blepharoplasty today. So a nice full day. Today I want to talk about lower eyelid blepharoplasty. I did address upper lid blepharoplasty uh, back in the fall, and you can go back in the stories on, on our um, IGTV and check that out. But a lower eyelid blepharoplasty, similar to an upper eyelid blepharoplasty, is a tightening of the lower eyelid, addressing the puffiness or the bags that can form, uh, addressing excess skin or folds of muscle. And there are many different ways to approach the lower eyelid. If you think of the lower eyelid in layers, you have skin, muscle, orbital septum, which is a thin cellophane-like layer, in behind the septum is the fat, which causes the puffiness or the eye bags, and in behind that is the conjunctiva or the inner lining of your, um, of your eyelid. And within that, or just below it, are, are small muscle fibers called the lower lid retractors. And so there's a lot going on in your eyelid. It's thicker than most people think, and it can be tricky uh, to get a perfect result without any complication. And so conservatism is the rule with lower eyelid surgery so that you don't end up with an eyelid malposition where the eyelids pulled down or end up with um, a hollowed, kind of sunken in look. And so you have to be very, very uh, delicate with the lower eyelid and and careful with what you do. They still, it's still a great op operation and there are safe ways to operate on the eyelid. And so in my practice, what we usually do is a transconjunctival approach to the fat. So if you have puffiness or eye bags that are making your eyes look tired, I pull the eyelid down, make an incision on the inside of the eyelid, and that gets me right to the fat. The fat can be removed. And if that's your only problem, that's the end of the surgery. And so there's no scar visible, the puffiness goes away, the inside lining heals really, really well and very quickly, and then you have a smoothed out lower eyelid. And that's very safe because you aren't affecting the muscle or the skin which can pull your eyelid down. If the issue is with folds of skin or muscle, then you have to change your approach. You know, if it's just skin and it's not excessive, we'll use a CO2 laser, and that's fantastic at tightening the lower eyelid. If there's more than about three millimeters of excess skin, then we have to start thinking about cutting the skin out. And that could be with a skin pinch lower lid blepharoplasty or a skin muscle flap. The skin pinch is literally where you gather up the skin right underneath the eyelash line, gather it up safely to a point where the eyelashes aren't moving at all, take that small strip of skin out and then sew things up. So your scar ends up right underneath your lower eyelashes and it comes out just to the corner of your eye here. And that again is very safe because you're not disturbing the middle portion of the eyelid, the septum and the muscle which is usually where complications come from when you get poor scarring in that layer and the eyelid can pull down. With all that being said, sometimes people have issues with the fat being prolapsed and making their eye look aged. They have redundant muscle and they have redundant skin. And so the only way to address all of that effectively is something called a skin muscle flap. A skin muscle flap is when you make an incision underneath the eyelid, you go through the skin and the muscle, you address the fat once you have the muscle lifted up by going through the septum and then you pull the whole thing up and you reattach it to the bone out here, the orbital rim, and give somebody a nice, smooth, tight eyelid. So those are the different approaches to, to lower eyelid surgery. For any of the residents out there that are studying for their, their Royal College exams or their board exams, your different approaches are a skin muscle flap traditionally, a skin pinch for skin only, a transconjunctival approach for fat or combination, and then CO2 laser for tightening or a chemical peel. Um, today in the operating room, what we're going to do is a transconjunctival lower eyelid uh, blepharoplasty with fat transposition. And so what that means is I'm going to free up the puffiness of the under eyelid and with that fat is going to be then pedicled or pulled down, attached to its blood supply and sewn into the cheek to act as its own filler. So she'll never need lower eyelid tear trough filler again because we're going to use her own fat. This is reliable because it has a blood supply. It's not like a fat graft where we take it from the thigh or the belly and inject it. We're actually using her own eyelid fat and putting it in a new position. So hopefully I'll be able to show you guys some intraoperative uh, pictures of what's going on um, and give you a better idea of what happens with a lower eyelid blepharoplasty. One thing I may do in this case as well is after I've moved the fat or transposed it into the cheek, I may pinch a little bit of skin and do a combined approach where I do a skin pinch blepharoplasty and a transconjunctival uh, blepharoplasty, but leave the muscle layer and the septum basically unaffected so that uh, she doesn't get a scarring problem or an eyelid malposition. So stay tuned, this is gonna be later in the day, so hopefully around four o'clock today, I will have those videos posted. If you're squeamish, just skip over those uh, parts of, the, of this story, and everybody have a great weekend, bye-bye.